thank you for waiting. Uh, th there will be a presentation by Frank, uh, a team leader of uh, a Rural Aid Foundation from Uganda. Uh, he's an open internet for democracy leader 2021-2022. So thank you for attending this session. Thank you, thank you so much for uh, coming. So I'll be presenting um, I, uh, it's, um, a research that I did um, during my fellowship or my leadership program um, as part of the Open Internet for Democracy Leadership. So that's brief about me. Um, and the research is going to be on the impact of internet shutdown on refugees and host communities in Uganda. Um, just like you mentioned, my name is Frank Ateka, and I'm the co-founder and team leader at True Aid Foundation, an organization that works to address digital health and economic rights uh, for refugees um, in Uganda. So I've been part of the Open Internet for Democracy Leadership Program, uh, that's 2021-2022 cohort, and I'm also currently finalizing my master's in public health at the University of Manchester um, in the UK, but I was previous also a Global Health Core Fellowship uh, Fellow in Uganda 2018-2019, and I'm a computer engineer by profession, um, as well as a digital health and economic rights um, um, advocate. So what is the Open Internet for Democracy Leadership Program? It's uh, a collective program um, that connects civil society, uh, media, uh, the private sector to preserve the online civic space. And uh, the leadership program empowers emerging leaders um, across the globe uh, to build their advocacy um, in order to uh, organize and protect the internet. Then about this research, um, the, the overall objective of this research was to assess the impact of internet shutdown uh, on refugees and host communities in Uganda. And the specific objectives were mainly three. We are looking at um, understanding the social and economic uh, effects of internet shutdown, specifically on refugees and host communities uh, in Uganda. But also objective number two was to determine um, the coping strategies that are adopted by refugees and host communities um, um, during internet shutdowns. Then thirdly, uh, was to, to understand the laws and policies regulating internet shutdown um, in Uganda's context. Then uh, background about the study, um, by the end of 2021, there were over um, 89.3 million uh, forcefully displaced people uh, worldwide, but also we had uh, uh, over 27.1 million um, refugees as part of those that were displaced. And in Uganda's context, um, by 2021, we had over 1.5 million refugees, and Uganda uh, was considered as um, the third largest refugee hosting country um, in the world. And refugees are 50% less likely to um, compare to the general population to access internet. Um, and also 20% of the rural refugees um, in Uganda have no access to internet at all. And this information is got from um, the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. Then the government of Uganda facilitated an internet shutdown prior to the um, 2021 general elections. Um, and this resulted in two uh, restrictions that uh, occurred um, uh, for online access. What was the methodology that was used during this research? We had uh, we used um, uh, mixed methods where we had uh, um, utilization of literal, uh, de uh, desktop research, or and uh, uh, we had qualitative and quantitative methods as well. The research was carried out in two refugee settlements in Uganda, uh, one um, in Chaka refugee settlement, and then. Uh, um, Chiriandongo refugee settlement. These are two of uh, the largest refugee settlements in the country. And we had two focus group discussions um, in every refugee settlement. And uh, the target uh, respondents or um, uh, participants 
uh, we had refugees and host community members, but also key informat interviews. So we had uh, four focus group discussions, um, and all these four were conducted uh, within the rural settings of Kiaka 2 and Kiriandongo refugee settlement. So of the respondents, we had those that were engaged in focus group discussions. We had 14 males and 18 females, giving us a total of 32. But also the key format in, uh, interviews were conducted for 12 respondents, um, seven at uh, within the rural setting, and five at national level. And uh, level of utilization, this is the utilization of um, uh, internet, refugees um, and um, um, host community members reported to be utilizing the internet in so many ways. Uh, as you can see, um, we have 6.19 um, using the internet for um, uh, uh, using social media as a source of accessing information. And then you have the majority, 11.34 percent, um, reported to be using uh, Facebook as this, um, uh, uh, as uh, the most important, the most used uh, social media platform. Then uh, refugees reported to be using uh, the internet for different purposes, um, and that's the chart in the middle. Um, we see majority of them, 10.31 percent reported um, using uh, internet for communication, and then uh, 2.6 um, reported using the internet uh, for political campaign or engagement, and the rest I will not go through all the details of that. Then um, in terms of economic use of the internet within the refugees and host communities, um, we see that 13.41% uh, uh, of the respondents reported that um, um, they used the internet for uh, to communicate mainly with their clients um, as business people, and then uh, um, followed by 10.3 percent who um, um, communicate uh, use uh, who reported using the internet for business in form of advertisement, and then 6.19 for um, uh, searching for jobs and entertainment, and then skills and livelihoods, um, um, which contributed 3. Point um, nine. Then key informat interviews showed a high level of understanding um, of uh, the concept of internet shutdown as uh, a key digital rights issue, while the refugees um, and host community members really showed a uh, limited understanding of the concept of, digital, uh, of internet shutdown as uh, a human rights issue. Then um, the, those effects of internet shutdown, the refugees and host community members noted that um, the internet shutdown really affects research. And one of the respondents noted that during the shutdown, I could not uh, do field work because the field, um, the research tools that I use, um, internet connected. So this was one of the voices from Chiriandongo refugee settlement. Then internet shutdown also affects access to education. Um, we see one of the refugees noting that me and my sister were doing online course in business skill development at the CTA. The CTA is a community technology access center, um, which is a facility within the refugee settlement that provides internet. So they were affected um, through their online studies. Then. Um, Sorry. For one reason or the other, I don't know if it's if the slides are no longer moving. Okay. So access to health information was also affected um, by internet shutdown. You know the internet shutdown, the most recent one in Uganda uh, was carried out in 2021, uh, a time when we had a COVID-19 lockdown. So it was a lockdown squared. We had the COVID-19 and then we had internet shutdown. So the internet was a form or a source of information to access uh, information on COVID-19 prevention, but all this was affected by the shutdown. Then mental health and the, um, the emotional health, we see that uh, one of the respondents noted that uh, during the lockdown there was no um, movement and the only way uh, to socialize was through the internet, but all that was hampered with uh, due to the shutdown. 
Then under to answer objective to the coping strategies, um, majority of the refugees and host community members did not report using any coping strategies. So they were not aware of any coping strategies um, in case of internet shutdown. So they, this is one of the voices that during the lockdown, we gave up on internet and we turned to radios um, where we could listen to some information, basic information. So most of the refugees actually, when there is an internet shutdown, they just give up on everything and they wait when the internet will be um, reinstalled or uh, put back. Then only a few of the refugees um, um, reported using VPN as, um, an, ac as a, an a coping strategy um, to improve uh, access to the internet. And uh, though this was not applicable in 2021, because um, in 2021 it was a total lockdown, but those that we interviewed uh, revealed that uh, they utilized the VPN in 2011 and 2016 uh, internet shutdowns that happened in, in the country. Then refugees and host communities uh, resorted to using other applications um, like TikTok, especially for the young people. Um, um, but this wasn't also possible uh, in 2021 because um, it was a total lockdown. Everything was done. But in the previous sh lockdowns, they were able to utilize those platforms. Then awareness, uh, objective three, we are looking at, um, um, we wanted to establish the level of uh, um, uh, the awareness on laws and policies um, governing internet shutdown in Uganda. So refugees and host communities throughout the data collection uh, process believed that internet was a violation of their rights. However, they lacked awareness on the laws and policies um, that govern internet um, shutdowns in the country. And as we can see, only from the key informat interviews, um, both from the rural and the urban setting, only 25% um, were aware of the laws and policies uh, regulating internet access in the country. So there is a capacity gap around that area. Then you see 75% of all the respondents really <laughs> didn't know about um, um, the laws and policies regulating internet shutdown. And the 25 that were aware could only mention some of these laws uh, without details, and they could uh, talk about the Computer Misuse Act. Uh, they mentioned about the um, Anti-Terrorism Act, but they also t uh, talked about Access to Information Act, though they lacked detailed information and how these laws were applied and uh, how they could be able to access justice using um, these policies. Then lastly, some of the respondents believed that the laws and policies were actually applied in favor of government. So the, the, these laws and policies were not there to defend the common person or the refugees and host community members, but they were mainly for the benefit or the interest of government. Um, now in terms of recommendations, um, we had recommendations around the following. We recommendations for civil society and the local business community. So we note that civil society organizations um, need to create awareness on laws and policies for um, organizations that are working on digital rights, but also within the refugee and host communities, especially those organizations working in the refugee settlements. Then civil society organizations also need to create awareness um, um, and call uh, on government uh, to, to create awareness on the dangers of internet shutdown as revealed by this study, uh, such that government can refrain from, those, uh, from imposing those shutdowns. Then in, um, civil society organizations also um, were called upon or in terms of a recommendation, what they could do is to set up interventions like the rural community technology access centers, which are basic um, computer centers, internet enabled um, facilities within the refugee settlement to address the digital divide between the refugee and host communities uh, compared to the general population just and Rural Aid Foundation, the organization that I work for, is already exploring this area in Chakatu refugee settlement. Then for government and policymakers, we want government or the recommendation for government is that 
government needs to realize um, the need for digital rights and freedoms as part of the um, wider scope of human rights, but also renew their commitments um, to at national, regional, and uh, international human rights standards in order to protect digital rights for the most vulnerable. Then government should utilize the human rights-based approach to implement laws and policies um, uh, that regulate uh, access to internet as opposed to using internet shutdown for their own interest. Then for internet service providers, we cannot talk about the game of uh, internet shutdown without talking about the internet service providers. In Uganda, uh, the internet service provider system is mainly private, um, and they, we would uh, want them to, where possible, to ensure that uh, they develop and implement independent in institutional policies that do not um, allow them to shut down the internet. Most of the time, internet shutdown are initiated by the state or government. Government will just write one letter through the Uganda Communication Commission, and then that letter is copied to all the internet service providers, and the next day the internet is shut down, because these telecom companies do not have their own standard operating procedures to resist the orders from government. Then internet service providers also need to install BTS, BTSs, or the must, those um, equipment and machines that are supposed to be um, providing internet um, for the hard to reach rural communities. Because one of the challenges uh, for accessing internet was uh, lack of uh, network which can be addressed through this. Um, now um, I'm winding up as we go for the participant reflections. I would want us as we leave this conference to probably go and reflect on some of these um, issues, uh, especially for organizations and um, um, individuals that are working on um, refugees, on humanitarian agencies. One, in your opinion, w uh, to what extent did the COVID-19 pandemic um, really exhibit digital divide, particularly as it relates to refugees and host communities? And how can digital um, rights advocacy work together um, to, to, to raise awareness on the impact of uh, internet shutdown? Then are there particular gaps in the existing legislation that could be addressed um, um, or advanced digital inclusion for refugees in your own setting. Mm -hmm. Then do you have any other recommendations that would like uh, to share as part of this? So I want to um, conclude by saying that we, we are currently um, working on having this uh, final research um, published, but I cannot conclude um, without thanking the team below that really supported um, uh, this work during the time I was doing the um, um, Open Internet for Democracy Leadership. So the team at SAIP, I think um, Morgan is right here. Um, Mahiru is not in the building. Um, we've had, uh, I was uh, given um, um, Peace. Uh, Peace is the Executive Director of Women of Uganda Network, and she really supported uh, during the review of the final research uh, document and I will be happy to share everyone with this, um, to share the final report or research with everyone. Thank you so much. Mm. In the concern of time, if there is any reflection uh, from the audience, we can give uh, two or three questions. I, I just mention your question again. I might have missed it. Sorry. When the, you mentioned in the survey, when you asked people, did they think the government was responsible for the shutdown, and they said no, who did they think was responsible for the shutdown? Actually, most of the community members, they are not aware of the role of government in the entire system of internet provision. They look at the internet service providers. So when the internet is down, 
they think it's MTN. If I'm using um, in MTN as my internet service provider or Airtel, they will blame Airtel and MTN. But they forget about the fact that it's actually government that writes to the key regulator, which is Uganda Communication Commission, asking Uganda Communication Commission to write to all the telecom service providers to shut down the internet for a predetermined period of time, maybe two weeks or even more. So for the lay person, they do not understand the entire dynamic system. But for those that the key internet, the key um, respondents uh, at national level, those that are working in civil society, telecom companies, and those that are working in human rights organizations, of course, for them, they are aware. But the lay people, refugees, host communities, it, 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 it was uh, a green area to them. Thank you very much. Um, you try to look at the impact of the shutdown, especially on the social as well as economic. But you try to also to look at the health impacts because they miss a lot of kind of information related with the COVID prevention techniques, blah, blah. So that means you indirectly try to touch the impact of which is health related impact can be directly or indirectly due to the shutdown. So what do you think that shutdown by any kind of stakeholder, uh, what could be the impact it can be directly or indirectly on the health of those refugee uh, uh, participants, for example? Thank you very much. Yes, yeah, I, I we uh, there was something to do with health. It was a general research, the social and economic impact. So on among the social impact, we had uh, an the effect of uh, internet shutdown on health care or access to health services. We then there was an aspect of mental health which was exacerbated um, uh, because most people are using the internet um, um, to access information. But at the end of the day, internet was down so people would not access uh, the information, especially even information on uh, how to prevent COVID-19 People were dying every day, and the only way they would know whether their relatives had died or they were in intensive care was through maybe using social media, WhatsApp, email, and all that was no longer possible. So I, the detailed report um, has all that information, and we shall be happy to share. Okay. Uh, if there is no additional questions, uh, we can close. Uh, if there is any, do, do you have any closing remarks? No. Thank you. Maybe to just thank everyone for taking time to um, attend this session. I know it was uh, very late, and most people actually have not um, uh, come because it was almost one of the last sessions of the day, and people are tired. But I thank everyone that made it really to come to this session. And I will be happy to share the final report, which we hope um, I can be able to also uh, find a way of publishing it. Thank you so much. And lastly, to thank the team at SAIP uh, that gave me the opportunity to be part uh, of the Open Internet for Democracy Leadership. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you all.